Hey everyone, my name is Anders, and today we are going to go over the latest test server patch. This is the start of round two of PvE buffs to all classes. So round one is live in Korea at the moment, and I will be going over all the changes there in a different video. Today, I just want to focus on the new fundamental changes the developers are implementing with regards to add-ons. Add-ons will now all be tier three. The only difference from now on is going to be what type of category the add-on is effect lies under and what cooldown your skill has. The longer the cooldown of your skill, the longer the duration of your tier 3 add-on. This also depends on the category of the add-on. We have different durations to work with. For example, Monster AP plus 30 as an add-on. This is an offensive effect under the offensive group A category of add-ons. This means depending on the cooldown of the skill I use it on, the effect of the add-on will last 7 to 20 seconds. A second example would be crit damage add-on. This is under the offensive group B category of add-ons. This means depending on the cooldown of the skill I use it on, the effect of that particular add-on will last five to 10 seconds. Bleed, HP on hit, down smash, air smash, those all fall under the other category, which seemingly means they are still working on this, but so far it looks like down smash would be a 15% chance at all levels, no matter your cooldown. Bleed will deal 20% more damage than before with the new add-on application. The categories we have so far are Offensive Group A, Offensive Group B, Defensive, Interrupt Group A, which is DP debuffs, those kind of things, stat decreases. Interrupt Group B would be speed reduction, so movement speed, cast speed reduction, that kind of thing. And then the other category, which is Bleeds, Down Smash, Air Smash. To see what level your add-on will be for any one skill, they have structured it into three cooldown categories. So level one, which would give you the least amount of that add-on duration would be for skills that have a cooldown of five seconds or less. Level two would be for skills with more than five second cooldowns and less than 13 seconds. Also for skills with cooldowns longer than 13 seconds, but that can be used on cooldown. Level three would be for skills with cooldowns 13 seconds or longer. Now to make this simply, I'm gonna use my Succession Megu as an example. My Shift F skill on Succession Megu Spirit Swirl is on a 13 second cooldown. That means we qualify for the maximum duration of any add-on we choose. So if we choose to have crit damage add-on on this skill, it would be crit damage plus 5% for 10 seconds. My ALMB skill, Bared Claws, is on a four second cooldown. That means we qualify for the lowest duration of any add-on we choose. So again, if I choose to have crit damage add-on on this skill, it would be crit damage plus 5% for five seconds. Hopefully that explains it well enough. This will be going live in Korea first as usual. This is just the start again of the round two of fundamental class changes we will be seeing. This will take a lot longer than the first round and we'll be going over hopefully fundamental issues with certain classes. I've seen some comments as well about this add-on change making Deathblow Lightstone sets useless because now you can have crit rate plus 30% on any skill you want. And this is true. The Lightstone will not be useful if you were using it up to this point. Luckily, I'm a Megu and I don't have these problems, but you should be selling your Blade Lightstones if you are using them. Now let's move on to the rest of the patch, which had some class balance as well. Round 2 class balance saw some changes to more classes. Succession Musa, for example, saw increases of damage to Rising Storm, though that means less damage when used on cooldown and more damage to Gale. The orange shows us the additional changes to the round 1 buffs that Musa already saw. So everything you see here is what Musa is getting next week week for us in global regions. Korea already has this. The orange part of this are the ones that are on test server today and will be going live in Korea next week. Maybe that also means we also get it alongside Korea. Could happen. I'm not sure about that. Next up, we have Succession Ninja, which again saw minor damage increases to some skills and changed the AP buff on one of their Rabams. Succession Striker as well got some additional damage buffs to more skills. As for the rest of the patch, Black Shrine bosses have been made a lot easier. Imogi, Dukshini, Bamboo Legion, Golden Pick King, and Changui are the ones that got changes. The chances of obtaining crystals and rare items from certain difficulties have also been increased by around two times the current drop rate in Black Shrine. You can also now exchange tokens of Land of the Morning Light for tier 1 crystals. While using Agris, you will obtain more tokens through gathering, trade, hunting, or farming life skills. Void Moretta Ocean Boss has finally been added. It was announced a while ago, but she will now drop an item needed to craft 
Warcraft a new tool for sailing. This will boost your ship stats, give you sailing XP, and depending on your enhancement level of this tool, boost your sailing mastery. There are three types of tools like the rest of the life skill tools, Manos, Blue Grade, and Logia. More obstacles have been cleared to help autopathing in the Etheria Sea, which is good to see. A new Garmouth once per family quest line has also been added. This will give you a Garmit's heart as long as you trade in 10 Garmit's Bloodstones, which are the new pity item for Garmit. You can only obtain them through the Garmit World Boss Bundle at a chance which you get every time you defeat Garmit. 10 of these Bloodstones will get you one guaranteed Garmit's heart, and once again, only once per family. The Nuver skills from Blood Nuvers have also increased in drop quantity. They have gone ahead and nerfed some of the mission requirements for the existing Garmit quest line, and they have also added dailies for Ulukita grind spots. Embarking and disembarking from your ship can now be done from a farther distance. T10 success UI has been updated and the UI for the market has been updated to show you when you have listed an item currently waiting to go on sale. And that's it for this one. Let me know what you think about the changes in the comments. There will be a developer stream tonight, so I'll be making a video on whatever gets announced later today as well. So as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.